Oh, another unnecessary close-up. I lost my coffee. Crap. I was gonna do a video and I lost my coffee. Wait right there. Ah, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready. <laughs> Welcome to the Voodoo Garden Channel. My name is Ray, I am your host and I have some things over here to show you and it's some good things too so you're going to want to see this. Um, first of all, first of all that's good. Um, I should do the mail first, right? All right, what do you think I should do? Plants, presents, or mail? Pick one of the three. Make your selection down here. <laughs> I'm kidding, you don't have a choice in the matter. Um, I'm going to do mail. I have a couple, three, this many, pieces of mail, and I wanted to get through these because I want to show you some things that I got going on that have everything to do with you, by the way. So don't tune out, all right? I want to talk to you. I got something from Steve, Stephen, sorry Stephen, and um, got a note, thanks. And uh, I also got this little tiny packet of seeds. Yeah, I know you can see it from clear over there. I'm sorry, I just don't feel like getting up and doing a Zoom. These are little tiny seeds, actually not so tiny. These are seeds from a plant called the sensitive plant. Have you ever heard of a plant called the sensitive plant? Um, it's Latin name, what is it? Mimosa pudica. Yeah, I believe that's the name. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it. Actually, uh, I used to raise and sell foliage plants in Denver for a while. I had a little store. So um, that's a little history into me that you didn't know. I actually used to have an indoor foliage plant store and I sold plants uh, in the store, sometimes at flea markets. I had a great time. You know, I used to uh, actually grow these things, but I would buy them from wholesalers in pots. So I never actually grew it from seeds. Now I'm going to. Kind of cool, huh? So thanks to Stephen, you're going to see a really interesting plant. If you've never seen a sensitive plant, it's the coolest thing. It's a plant that actually moves. And what it does is um, when it's growing in a pot and you touch it, the branches and leaves cr just kind of curl up and fall down. And I got something else in bubble wrap. Nothing says fun quite like bubble wrap, huh? Hey, bubble wrap. Kind of cool, huh? Buddy likes bubble wrap. Once more? <laughs> That's pretty fun, huh? Lick my bubble wrap. Yeah, it is delicious. Okay, um, <laughs> Buddy does what he's told. I got coffee beans, and these come in from, pardon me while I see, um, these come in from, these come in from Jason, and it says, read before opening. Oops. By the way, thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. I will drink coffee because of you and um, not this store-bought crap. So I'm going to be growing coffee beans, and uh, that's kind of cool considering I like coffee. And uh, James sent me uh, an empty baggie. Uh, <laughs> actually, James sent me something, but I had to open it and use it before I did a video. So it looks like an empty baggie, but it's not. He sent me palm seeds for a palm tree, and uh, I planted those, and they're upstairs. So I'm seeing if I can sprout them. I'm not quite sure I can, because he doesn't know what kind of seeds they are, and he doesn't know much about them, so I really have nothing to tell you about them, other than I'm trying to grow James's seeds in my house. So I may or may not have a palm tree. We'll see. So, ooh, so that takes care of stuff. Oh, that takes care of the mail. And I wanted to show you something else. I got so many things, I'm just kind of like rolling right along here. Because this is really kind of nice. This was a gift from my roommate, and uh, it was my birthday. Ah, I had a birthday. Yeah, I, I do that every now and then. And um, he got me a book, and it's called Organic Gardening from Rodale. Yeah. And uh, you know, the first thing I did when I got this thing, I unwrapped it, and I went, ooh, a book. And then, um, you know, because I like books. I just like the feel of them. And also, organic gardening, how can you not? And uh, the first thing I did, and I don't know why, I always do this every time I get a book. Oh, I love the smell of books. I used to go into the bookstores like uh, B. Dalton and uh, Borders and stuff, and I would smell their books. <laughs> I didn't buy them, I just smelled them. 
Actually, I used to buy their books. I used to read a lot of science fiction books. And uh, I would get gift coupons to these stores for uh, my birthday. And I would go in there and I would buy books with the coupons. And then um, I would read the books, then take them to another store and trade them in and they give you trade-in credit and I would get other books, read those, take them to another store, get trade-in credit and get more books. And so I'd get all these books out of just one gift coupon for not very much money. And uh, the thing I loved about those bookstores is the smell. You know, anybody that's ever been in a bookstore, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know, it just smells really cool. It smells like, it smells like book. And uh, it doesn't smell like wood. It doesn't smell like paper as far as I'm concerned. It just smells like a a book. That's the closest thing I can. That's the closest thing I can um, explain it as. So I've been sniffing my book lately, and uh, <laughs> no, I don't get high off of it. And uh, oh, by the way, he also gave me a one-year subscription to a magazine called Organic Gardening. And Organic Gardening is a great magazine. It has articles on all kinds of stuff. And oddly enough, they have articles on growing tomatoes. And as much as I grow tomatoes, and I teach you how to grow tomatoes. I read about them too. I think I need an intervention. <laughs> I think it may be a plan to shut me up because when he gives me something that has to do with gardening, I kind of busy myself and I read that or I work with it or I grow it and it keeps me distracted. And when I'm not distracted, I'm bugging him talking about gardening and sometimes you can just see it in his eyes like he's like, oh, sad face, Ray won't shut up again. <laughs> The other day, I'm at the computer in the morning having my coffee, I'm answering all these emails, and I get about maybe a couple hundred a day, and uh, so I'm going through them as fast as I can trying to get them answered, and, you know, because I try and answer all the emails. You know, and, and um, it was really kind of weird because he comes into the living room, and uh, he asked me a question, he said, Ray, do you ever feel like you could poop all day? <laughs> and I had no idea he was going to say that, and I was totally not expecting that. And I looked her back at him and I said, what did you just say? Did you just ask me if I felt like I could poop all day? And he said, yeah. Like, you know, and he, and he was totally serious. He was not laughing or anything. And I, I just busted up laughing. I thought that was the most hysterical thing I'd heard. Normally I can't shut up. And uh, I'm always talking. And that was one thing that shut me up because I really had no idea how to answer something like that. I, I thought, no. <laughs> Pretty much every day, I can stop pooping. And uh, that was just something that popped into his head and he asked me and I didn't know what to say. So uh, <laughs> now you know what kind of a person I live with. He's a bit odd. Oh, and uh, I have some guests here and I wanted to show you stuff because this is the part of the video that relates directly to you. This is a pineapple plant and this is the small pineapple plant. I have the big one that has the big pineapple and I have the small one that has a small pineapple. And uh, I do, I've done a couple videos on the updates on these. And um, one thing has changed. I have brighter lights upstairs than I ever had before. I, you walk upstairs and it's like being on the sun. It's just this bright fluorescent wonderland of light I have going on there. And the plants are loving it. These plants are growing so well. I had to show you some stuff that's going on. From all that I've read, all that I know about pineapples, which is about this much, I know that they grow. They eventually put out a pineapple, if you're lucky, and then you cut off the pineapple, you eat the pineapple, and then you plant the top of the pineapple, and the main plant will either die or it won't die. That's pretty much all I know about them. And um, this thing did something a little odd. It formed a little itty bitty pineapple about the size of a golf ball, which I thought was cute. But um, the little top, I call it the little hat, the little pineapple hat, it was this little tiny hat. And I thought it would just be this little tiny hat and the pineapple would grow and maybe turn yellow or orange or whatever color they turn when they're ripe. And then I would eat it. Well, with the light, what happened is its little hat grew bigger and it's turning into another plant and the pineapple isn't ripening. The pineapple is staying a little hard pineapple. And now I have a plant on top of a pineapple on top of a plant. So, um, yeah, I don't know what to do. I bought a lemon for cooking a couple weeks ago and I decided to try and save the seeds because people have mentioned that you can grow lemon trees and actually quite a few people have told me that they're growing lemon trees. I planted four seeds in one cup and I assumed that maybe just one of them would sprout and no. All of them sprouted, every single one. I had a 100% germination rate. 
Who knew? I had, no, I didn't know. I, <laughs> I just assumed it would be like one plant. So I took them out really quick uh, as soon as they all sprouted uh, before the roots got entangled and I separated them and put them into different cups. I threw the smallest one away because I thought, you know, I really don't need four lemon trees in my house. Maybe three. <laughs> like three isn't going to take up any space at all. But I have three lemon trees and here's one of them. They're growing really fast underneath those little lights. This one here is only, I think, two weeks old since the day I planted it. Yeah, it took a week to sprout and a week to get this big. So I'm really, really happy with that. Okay, next. This little booger. Let's zoom in on this. I'm learning how to use my camera. Bear with me, okay? I'm having fun, but I got to show you this. See that little stick in the middle? That is called a magic fruit. That's the name that they had on the internet. Look it up, type in magic fruit on Google. Plant these berries and uh, it'll grow a bush, kind of like a blueberry, and, uh, but the, the berries are red. And the weird thing about these is uh, you take the berry, you eat it, and then you can eat a lemon, you can eat uh, grapefruit, and it'll taste sugary sweet, and you won't pucker up or anything. That's what they say you can do with this thing. It makes everything that's sour sweet for about, I think, a half an hour or 10 minutes or something weird like that. So I'm going to grow this, and then when it puts out berries, I'm going to eat one, and I am going to eat a lemon, lemon peel and all, on camera and test it out to see if it works. If it works, I will be smiling and chewing happily on a lemon, and if it don't work, um, well, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to be puckering up and rolling around on the floor and gagging and <laughs> spitting up lemon. Okay, next on the lineup, these are strawberries. I planted these from seeds. Most people, when they start strawberries, will start them from runners off of a plant. There, I have a friend online called Helioforge. He has a great channel. He does gardening too. He sent me some seeds and I planted them and they sprouted. I have about four of these cups of strawberries and he said I will probably only get a couple runners by next year and I'm going to try everything I can to get these things growing all through the winter and see if I can get a strawberry on my first year. Next up, this is a crepe myrtle, C-R-E-P-E. -E. I don't know what a crepe myrtle is. I looked it up. They're actually really pretty. Somebody sent me some seeds for a crepe myrtle and I was going to wait until next spring and I thought, eh, who can wait? Waiting is for suckers. I decided to grow it now. So I have a crepe myrtle growing in my house and as it gets bigger, I'll be transplanting it. And if it can grow up north here, I'll plant it outside next spring. So during the winter, I'll be growing my myrtle indoors. That was fun. Now this one isn't a gift from somebody else, but Mike uh, brought home oranges and uh, he peeled me an orange while I was at the computer and he dropped it off of my desk and I ate it and uh, I decided to save the seed and see if it would grow. I literally thought, no way this is not going to grow because I've never heard of anybody sprouting an orange from seeds. So I, I just tried it anyway and there we go. So this is actually from a friend, Mike, and uh, he gave me the orange and I'm growing an orange tree. This is a passion flower, and I'm hoping that I'll actually get flowers from these. So it's quite exciting. I've never grown a passion flower, but I looked them up online, and they are the most beautiful alien looking flowers I can imagine. And so I'm hoping I get flowers on this. It's going to be great. This, by the way, is the plant everybody's warning me about. This is a wisteria. Uh, people said, be careful, these things are invasive, they'll take over your yard, they'll eat your children, they'll get in your fridge. Um, probably, but not today, it's just a baby, and I'm growing it in a pot inside, so maybe it'll just take over upstairs and grow along the walls. I don't know, maybe I won't even take it outside. I kind of like growing some of these things inside because it's something I can enjoy throughout the winter and I know I got a long winter coming up so I'm doing a lot of these plants now so that I'll have this jungle going in the winter and uh, you'll be seeing it I'm gonna be doing videos in the winter with all these crazy plants I'm starting this is from a friend who has a channel called cross pecans remember uh, back at my old house she sent me carob carob seeds and uh, uh, pecans well this is a carob plant and I planted the carob seeds and look at it. 
Yeah, it's growing beautifully. It's going to grow into a nice little tree. It's strong. It's got nice dark leaves. It's sturdy. It's absolutely beautiful. So, Susan, this is from your seeds that you sent me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate it. I can't wait to try carob. Oh, this little beauty. I love this plant. I look at this every day. I water it every day because it drinks like a fish and uh, it, it just sucks up the water. But there are three plants in here. This is a Medusa pepper. Um, somebody sent me Medusa seeds. He uh, did videos on growing um, uh, Medusa peppers and I thought they were fantastic. He sent me some seeds and look, little Medusa flowers all over the place. This thing is prolific like you would not believe. Look at that. It is time to transplant. So this is the last time you'll see it in this tiny pot. It's got to go into a larger pot. Started out in a little cup, went up to another size cup, then it went into this thing, and now it outgrew this thing within, I'd say, I don't know, a week and a half to two weeks. Yeah, it's going really nice. And look at the dark green on this. That is fantastic. That's just from the lights upstairs, that fluorescent lighting that I have going on. It's beautiful. Isn't that nice? That is a beautiful plant. So whoever it was that sent me the Medusa seeds, I, I forget names, but you know who you are. If you sent me Medusa pepper seeds, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is beautiful. And it's all thanks to you. Look at this thing. This plant is out of control more so than any plant I've grown in quite a long time. It grew from a seed to this in a matter of a few weeks. This is a huckleberry. Yeah, it's like huckleberry fin, you know, the old books. Yeah, this is a huckleberry and uh, it'll grow into a huckleberry bush, I think, and it'll put out little berries and it's already starting to put out flowers. I mean, this is just a baby plant, but it's so healthy and so strong, I had to transplant it and I didn't pinch it back at all. It's actually naturally bushing out. It has little tiny flowers and it's putting out flowers all over the place and it's gonna put out huckleberries. Huckleberries are used to make huckleberry pie, huckleberry jellies, jams, all kinds of fun stuff. I've never had a huckleberry. It's generally a southern thing. And uh, so I probably wouldn't have a whole heck of a lot of luck growing this outside. I may, but not this year. It's a little too late in the season. So I'm going to grow huckleberries in the winter in my house. So it's going to be interesting to see how big this thing gets. Whoever sent me huckleberry seeds, thank you for the huckleberry seeds. This is your plant. This is where it gets a little scary. These triplets, actually there's three plants in each pot, but I call them the triplets. They are identical and they're beautiful and they are so dangerous. These are butt jalokias. I uh, ordered some seeds from a company online and uh, they didn't send me the seeds. They kept the money and I had to go through my bank and reverse the charges. So I got my money back. The idiot rips people off and that's really not a cool thing to do. So uh, I didn't get my seeds, and uh, a friend I have online, a viewer, uh, he grows butt jalokia. I keep calling them butt jalokias. I have no idea how to pronounce them. I just like to say butt jalokia. And these are the peppers that can make a grown man cry like a baby. And they're growing really, really good. I'm afraid to touch the plants, so I'm trying not to touch them. And as soon as I get done filming this, you can bet I'm gonna wash my hands with warm water and soap really, really quick. And I saved the best for last. I gave this to myself. This is the plant, not the actual plant, but this is the type of plant that got me started on YouTube. This plant is famous worldwide. This is my famous Prax tomato that I started from uh, a hybrid many, many, many years ago. Save the seeds, grew it, save the seeds, grew it, grew clippings. I did videos on how to resurrect a tomato, how to grow one indoors, how to grow one in the winter time, how to grow it low, which is now known as the Prax method. This is a direct descendant of that very first plant. And I thought I had given all my seeds away this last year because I thought, you know, I think I'll move on to something else. And I found it in my drawer in my desk and it was taped to a piece of um, paper and there were three seeds and I planted them and three of them sprouted. I decided to start growing it again because it is a delicious tomato. It grows beautifully. It is prolific. It is sturdy. It is strong. It is the best tomato I have ever grown. 
Okay, I think that pretty much does it. I was going to ramble on about some other stuff, but I really don't feel like it. I think I've done enough filming today. So I will put it all on the next video. How's that sound? Okay, I got to take these guys upstairs because they're not used to being in this area here. I got to put them back underneath the light. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And if you get a second, click subscribe, would you? And uh, I will give you some more information on what's going to happen as far as the questions and answers, the Praxis Weekend Edition that I'm bringing back, and also some ideas that I am working on for a website. Yes, a website. Not taking away from the Voodoo Garden channel or the Praxis channel, but something that is basically for you. This is Ray of the Voodoo Garden channel saying thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.